God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I just love that melody of those beautiful words about letting God use our lives for Him. Today I'm going to talk about that. And to do that, I'm going to use the second scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you and I share with you today at verses 13 and 14. You were called by God to be free in serving one another humbly in love. So love your neighbor as yourself. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, today is Super Bowl Sunday. And today, the players on both teams are going to be using their hands to try to win a football game. Some of them are going to use their hands to throw this football. Some of them are going to use their hands to carry this football. Some of them are going to use their hands to catch this football. But I can tell you this, the team that is the best at using their hands with this ball, that's the team that's going to win that football game. Today I want to talk with each of you about using your hands to serve God. So far we've talked about resetting and using our heart with God. We've talked about resetting our mind with God. We've talked also about resetting our voices with God. Today, I want to encourage you to reset your hands with your God. Let me begin by talking with you about the gospel reading that Pastor Welmer just read a moment ago for you. It's a great story. Four men really loved their paralyzed friend. And they took him off to see Jesus so Jesus could heal him. Like I said, the man's paralyzed. He can't walk. His life is really tough. It's miserable. But he has four really cool friends. And the friends, they hear that there's a man named Jesus who's been healing people. And they hear that Jesus is actually going to be in their town. And so what they do is they put their paralyzed friend on a mat and they each get on an end and they carry their friend to the house where Jesus is. When they get to the house, well, as you can imagine, it is packed. People are all over the place because they're there to be healed by Jesus too and they can't even get in the front door. And so what they do, one of them is pretty ingenious, and what he did is he got up on the roof and he took off some of the tiles. And then they lifted their friend over the wall, through the roof, right there in front of Jesus. It was amazing. Can you imagine how it must have looked to the people there in that house? Well, here, their paralyzed friend's right there in front of Jesus, and Jesus heals him. Jesus heals him. He's able to walk again. It is a great miracle of Jesus. And it all happened because four friends were willing to use their hands to take their paralyzed friend to Jesus so he could be healed. You know, I love this story. I love it because these four friends, they overcame their fear and their worry, and they made sure that they took their friend to someone who could help them. It's great. It's great when you see people who are willing to help other people around them. I see this in Don Johnson, who oversees our ministry to people in need in our community. Every month, month after month, Don makes sure that we have opportunities to use our hands to help people in our community with food and with clothing and with whatever else they need. It's great. I see this in Joyce Lau, who oversees our prayer shawl ministry. Joyce has people get together every month to, to make these prayer shawls, to give to people in need in our church and throughout our community. I see this in Nancy Hewitt, who oversees our Braille ministry. Nancy gets people together and they put together little devotion booklets for blind people and then they send these devotion booklets all over the world to help people in need. I see this in a group of our members who are going to be going 
to Belize this week. They're going to be going to Belize to share the love of Jesus with children, and they're going to build things for a church there so people there can get to experience the love of Jesus as well. You know, I see this in so many, many of you here in our church. You are constantly using your hands to help people in need right here in our own church, around us in our community, and in places like Belize all over the world. You are continually serving God. Look again at the Word of God before us today. The Apostle Paul here is talking about serving others. He's talking about the actions and the behaviors that go along with people who have already reset their hearts and their minds and their voices with God. This is what the Apostle Paul says. You were called by God to be free in serving one another humbly in love. So, love your neighbor as yourself. Obviously, God wants us to serve those who are around us. Obviously, God wants us to use our hands to help people in need around us. Let me answer three questions for you to help you to be effective in using your hands to serve Jesus. First, the first question is, why should I serve? Why should I go to any trouble to do things to help people who are around me? Well, notice here that the Apostle Paul says that you have been called by God to be free in serving others. What are you free from? Well, one thing, you are free from your sins. Jesus has died on a cross to forgive your sins. Another thing, you are free from death. Jesus rose from the dead to overcome death for you. And then you are also free to receive the gift of eternal life in heaven because of what Jesus did for you. You receive that gift through your trust in Jesus. You're free. But don't use your freedom, says the Apostle Paul, for your own selfish ambition. Don't use your freedom just for yourself. Don't use your freedom just for your own convenience. Don't use your freedom just for your own comfort. No. Use your freedom to love others. Use your freedom to serve others. Use your freedom to give to others. Use your freedom to care about others. You see, it's because of the love of Jesus for you. That's why you want to serve people who are around you. The second question is, who should I serve? Well, the Apostle Paul here says to serve your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Well, your neighbor is anyone around you who is in need. Your neighbor is your fellow member here in your church who's going through some really difficult times, maybe in their family, maybe at their job, maybe with their health. Your job is to serve those in your community who are in need. They're your neighbors. You're also to help the people who are far away from you. In places like Belize and other places around the world, people in need. That's who you are to serve. You're to serve all the people in need who are around you. And then the third question is, how do I serve? The Apostle Paul here says, to serve your neighbor as yourself. Serve your neighbor like you want to be treated. Treat your neighbor the way you would like to be treated. Help him and love him and care for him. Let me explain it this way. Earlier in the service, Elizabeth gave the children some M&Ms. And in those M&Ms, she asked them to share some with others, right? Well, you know, I don't know that it's fair that the children get all the M&Ms, right? It'd be nice once in a while if you as adults would get something too, right? Well, let me show you. 
I have this little bag of M&Ms. And in this little bag, there's only 10 M&Ms. Not very many to share. But I have this big bag of M&Ms. And I can tell you, there's enough in here that you could all have plenty. There's a lot to share. Here's the point. God gives to every one of us, he gives some talents, some gifts. We call it some passions, things that you're good at. Everybody has some. But God says, you don't just have a few, you have a lot. You've got so many things that you can share with others, it's beyond imagination. Because here's what God says. He says in his word, he says that he gives all things that we need to be able to help others around us. You have everything you need to be able to help others because of Jesus. And that's why I encourage you today to serve others. I encourage you to show up and help others. I encourage you to love others. I encourage you to care for others. I encourage you to give of yourself. Jesus says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. You're going to experience that abundantly when you are doing things to help other people who are around you. And you know, one day, when you're heading up to heaven, Jesus is going to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and join me in heaven. How great that will be. Jesus is also going to say to you, you let me reset your heart. And your faith was pleasing to me. You let me reset your mind. And your thoughts were pleasing to me. You let me reset your voice. And your words were pleasing to me. You let me reset your hands. And your actions were pleasing to me to me. What a great day that'll be. You know, what a great new year it's going to be as together here at Messiah Lutheran Church, we use our hands to serve those who are around us. As we reset our heart and our mind and our voice and our hands with Jesus, it is going to be a great year. Oh, by the way, To remind you to share the things God gives you with others, on the way out of church today, I'm going to give to each one of you a bag of M&Ms. You get some too. Will you now pray with me? Heavenly Father, take our hands and set them apart for your service. Take our lives and use them to do great things for you. It is in Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen. Please now stand as we now join together in the next song of praise. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering. Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives.